I have the U-scope here. We're going to do a quick uh, DIS secondary ignition on a 2005 Pontiac Grand Prix. First thing we want to do always is connect the test lead to the scope. In this version of the scope, the connection is located up here in the top left. We want to make sure it's pressed in all the way. With that complete, we're going to go ahead and connect to the vehicle. I'm going to start up here on the first plug wire. In this case, it's marked. It tells me it's number six. With that done, I'm going to turn on the scope, and that on-off switch is located down here in the bottom right. And I see a little bit of a secondary pickup signal there. Notice that the time per division and volts per division are not optimized. So what I'm going to do, there's a cool way to get to those controls. I'm going to come up here to the very top and I'm going to press the A button. And I'm going to hold it down and the screen's going to change. Notice that on the right the menu disappeared and I have on the right, instead I have volts per division uh, of the screen. Now what's important about going to this screen is, is that the up down arrow keys and the left right arrow keys are all now dedicated to the volts per division, the up down, and the time per division, the left right. So that makes it easy to size our waveform. So let's uh, make it a little bit taller and slow it down a little bit. And we have a pretty decent waveform right there. It's still jumping around a little bit, but at least it's fitting the screen. Notice up here in the top left it says auto. Well that's the trigger mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the OK button to get back to my menu and I'm going to select trigger, hit OK, select trigger mode, use my left right arrow keys to select normal. Now notice how steady the display is. That's because it's only updating when the trigger requirements are met. It makes it a little bit easier to study the burn time of this DIS ignition system. Now we could do other things, like for example we could lower the uh, trigger level and that way it will trigger accurately, a little bit more accurately and a little more often. And I'd say that looks pretty good. Now the next thing that we could do if we wanted to is we could turn off that menu and come down here to the CR menu. CR stands for cursors. Hit OK and I could measure out uh, the signal. Right now it's on cursor 1 and I'm bringing it down. And I'm going to bring it down in the area of the burn line. Now that I got it there, I'm going to bring up the other cursor. Until it's about right there. Now I've got a voltage, kind of a voltage reference of uh, the uh, voltage of the burn line. So I can come down and I can also squeeze it in and measure out my... Um, uh, burn time, which is very important. On secondary ignition using lab scopes, burn time and burn voltage are very, very key uh, diagnostics. It's a little bit hard to judge it by the OKV, the old style of doing it. So I'm going to move my cursor over, and that's fairly close right there. Now, now that the cursors are set, if you look down here at the very bottom, you have delta time, delta voltage and delta time. Delta voltage is showing 500 uh, millivolts. Delta time is uh, 1.32 milliseconds. So we're about 1.3, 1.25 on the burn time. And that might be a little short on this vehicle. I'm not very familiar with it, but that's my starting point. I can pull out a plug, check it out if I want. So now that we have this one done, what we want to do is compare it to the other ignition fires. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take secondary pickup and I'm just going to go to the other side. Now I'm on the negative side of the coil. With it on the negative side of the coil, that means the signal is going to be upside down. So how I'm going to take care of that is I'm going to turn off that menu and I'm going to go up here to the V menu. V stands for vertical or voltage. Anything that has to do with vertical or voltage will be under this menu. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to find invert. Invert is an issue of the vertical display of the signal. And I'm going to hit a left right arrow key to invert it. 
I'm going to turn off the menu, and there's my inverted secondary ignition right there. Now notice that the display is a little bit different. It's down lower. So my voltage window isn't the same, but at least my time window is the same. And so I can compare the burn times easily now that I already have my cursors in place. And so the next strategy is I could simply go to all the negative sides of the coil and look at them, compare the burn time and burn voltage, or I could just simply go to all the positive ones or go positive, negative, positive, negative, and simply uh, do my invert. Now watch how cool this works. On the voltage setting, what we did is, is our, last, our last control was on the invert. Notice it up here in still the right. That means that these left right arrow keys are still dedicated to invert. So what I'm going to do is go to the next positive and this is actually upside down right now. So I'm going to just hit that left arrow key. Now it's right side up. Hit it again. I'm upside down. Turn it right side up. It's hard to tell because my trigger was was triggering on the uh, the companion spark when it was upside down. But if you look carefully, you can see that that signal is different than that one. And so the scope's very powerful because you can quickly toggle from uh, inverted to not inverted. You know, this scope's about being easy to use. Now, the next thing we're going to do is, now that I have my secondary set up, I want to save this setup so I don't have to do it again. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to use my down arrow key to go to the PS menu. PS, men PS stands for Program Setups. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to say, Save User. What's going to happen is I'm going to save this setup and waveform onto the SD card. And then I'm going to be able to recall it. And not only can I recall it, but I can go to my PC, hook my uh, U-scope up to a PC through the USB cable, and I can change the file name. Instead of it being 003, for example, I can change it to, say, secondary uh, POS, SEC POS, or DIS SECP for DIS secondary positive. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to hit and hold down the OK key. Notice the red indicator. We now save the file. So to show that I saved the file, I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to turn it back on. And I'm going to come back to my PS menu. Hit OK. Oops, that's measurement menu. PS menu, hit OK. Select load reference. And I'm going to find file number three. There it is. Hold it down. Notice the purple waveform. That is the waveform that we had saved as a reference. Notice the setup. It immediately adjusted everything on the scope. And again, you can save these and change their name and load them into custom uh, directories. And I've already done one. So let me show you this. I'm going to turn it off, reset all the settings on the scope. It's so quick to turn on and off, might as well do it that way. So I'm going to come down to the program setup screen again. And this time I'm going to go to ignition menu. The ignition menu represents a uh, directory on the SD drive. So with that selected, I'm going to use my left right arrow keys to find my secondary DIS P for positive. What I did is I saved it like I showed you just a second ago. I went to my PC and I uh, changed the file name and I moved it into my ignition preset up subdirectory. Hold the key down, load it up, there's your reference waveform and the scope set up and ready to go.